She pays more attention to my brother and I don't want her to go through that. I don't want her to see him paying attention to the other kids and she's not getting love from her dad. That's hurtful. That does, that messes people up. And I don't want her to ever go through that. I'm pretty sure some people wish they could swap their parents and get new ones. Ms. Jacobs fell into that category when her father ghosted her on her 14th birthday and never returned. She dragged her dad to court to demand answers and find out why he had disappeared all these years. The case began like this. Ms. Jacobs, you claim that your world was shattered just after your 14th birthday when your dad suddenly up and disappeared. Yes, Your Honor. Today you say you've brought him to our courtroom to demand answers. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Walker, you claim you'd always believe Ms. Jacobs was your biological daughter. Then on her 14th birthday, you overheard a conversation that changed everything. Yes, Your Honor. Can you imagine the shock and heartbreak that must have filled the room when Mr. Walker, the defendant, here those wards, overwhelmed, he decided to confront Miss Jacobs' mother, seeking answers to why she chose to reveal such a painful truth on her daughter's special day. This is what unfolded after their confrontation. Why? Why would you do it now, 14 years later, at her party, when we're supposed to be having a good time with her birthday, and you wait 14 years later to drag it out? And then what, what happens at that point? The relationship ended, you ended the relationship. That's correct. So wait. Now that is just heartbreaking. How do you go from having a beautiful family to going to school every day from foster care? Believe me, it can be very devastating. Trying to explain how much the situation broke her down, she decided to read out a letter she had written to her dad when he disappeared without telling her why. I actually have a letter here from where I took and I wrote it when I was 14 when my dad actually left. Can you read that for the court, please? I can. It says, um, Dad, I wish you'd never left. It really sucks that you're not here. Every night I pray that you come back. Sometimes I even pretend that what it would look be like if you were still here. I don't know when I'm ever going to see you again and it hurts. I'm kind of angry about it too. Moving on, Mr. Walker went on to explain to the judge how crazy his marriage to Ms. Jacobs' mother had been. He claimed that from the very beginning, he had taken enough of her mother's lies and disloyalty, and hearing her make that statement on his daughter's birthday just put him off. She went to foster care because I had a job, and when I threw her mother out because of all that coming out at her birthday party, I set her mother out. I, said, I had enough. Your Honor, I went through it all through, even before her and I got married. There was times that my family would come to me. I was over the road truck driver, so I was not home all the time. Hmm. It looks like the trouble he was facing in his marriage was just too much. He wasn't done with his story, though. He claimed he even remembered a time when he caught her cheating, and it was very difficult for him to comprehend. Take a look. I did at one time. She told me I could go visit my brother, and she was going to go visit her mother. Well, uh, and I called her a few hours later at her mother's house, and her mother answered the phone, and I said, is she there? And she's like, well, no, she ain't been here all day. I said, she's supposed to be at your house. And uh, so I needed her to watch the children so I could go to work. Uh, from the way he was talking, you could tell he was heartbroken to find out his wife had been cheating on me all this while. After catching his wife cheating, he decided to confront her about it and asked her what she was doing with the guy in the house when she was supposed to be watching the kids. What were you even doing down there? And then I confronted her about the Walmart thing from her friends saying that they've been in a relationship ever since she started working there. And of course she denied all that. And I'm like, well, then why did I catch you at the dude's house drinking beer? with four other guys and him. Uh, so how are you gonna deny that when I catch you at it? Nah, that's some real ghetto spirit, believe me. Ms. Jacobs' mom has a lot of guts, I'll give her that. Hearing enough of his story, Judge Lauren turned to Ms. Jacobs and asked her if she had ever heard at any point while growing up that Mr. Walker was not her father. This was the reply she gave. Walker may not be your biological father. Yes, when I was 16, um, I told my mother that I didn't wanna be around anymore, that I wanted my dad to come down for my daughter's birth, well, her birth. I had her when I was 17. And when my mom found out, she was like, I don't know why you would want him to be there. He's not your real father anyways. That means he's not her grandfather. She caught her mother cheating? Ms. Jacobs has one hell of a mom, all right. Apparently her mom had been sleeping with one of Mr. Walker's family members. And when her daughter told her father about it, she denied it, saying Ms. Jacobs was just making up stories in her head. Uh, I had came home, I, like I said, I drove truck for many years of my life. And I had come home to my daughter meeting me at the door. She said, Daddy, Daddy, he's supposed to take shower with Mommy. He's supposed to take naps with Mommy. 
I'm like, well, no. She's like, he was day. He was, he took shower with mommy. So I did confront her mother with it. And her mother's like, she's a five-year-old. You're going to believe everything a five-year-old says? Wow. Believe me, I am speechless right now. I think it's time we ended this case of a ghetto mom. The results are sitting pretty with Judge Lauren, and she is ready to unveil the truth. Is she really his daughter? Mr. Walker, you are Aisha's father. I love you. <laughs> well, I just, I hope that now that you have the truth. Mr. Tadena was in the courtroom today to clear his name from the allegations that he was a father. In his heart of hearts, he believed he was done with Ms. Ramirez and no longer had any kind of feelings for her. He even climbed and she was trying to pin the baby on him so that she could have him back in her life. The case began like this. You are seeking the results of a paternity test for Ms. Ramirez's one and a half month old daughter, Aislinn. You claim you two broke up and now you have no feelings for Ms. Ramirez whatsoever. Apparently, Mr. Sedano was Miss Ramirez's everything. From her first love to her first boyfriend and basically everything after that. She was pretty hurt that he would want to deny her and her daughter and also claim she was trying to pin a baby they brought welcome it into this world in him. If I were in her shoes, I would also feel very betrayed. Your ex No, with I this am baby. not trying to trap him with this baby. I'm actually, I'm very shocked. I'm very hurt that he would even deny her. What you're about to hear will definitely make you ask if Miss Ramirez was a child because only kids would do something so petty. Apparently, Ms. Ramirez was in contact with his girlfriend. After she and Mr. Sedeno had split up, she told his new girlfriend that she was going to sleep with him regardless of the fact that he was in another relationship. She wasn't bluffing though. You got on the phone with his girlfriend. Yes. I gotta get this. <laughs> you said, I'm gonna have sex with my ex, which is your current boyfriend. Yeah, because I She would... said, prove it. With a smile on his face, Mr. Sedano didn't deny that it happened, but that wasn't his focus in the courtroom. He was here to talk about his doubts about the child Ms. Ramirez claimed was his. It was pretty funny because Mr. Sedano and Ms. Ramirez were still very intimate, and he still had a girlfriend. I was with my girlfriend when it did, and I have my pretty much my list of doubts of why I pretty much think the Aislinn's not mine. How so despite the fact that you're admitting that you do still sleep with Ms. Ramirez... Mr. Sedano couldn't even keep his stories in check. Funny enough, the child in question wasn't the only child he had with Ms. Ramirez. He had two other kids in the equation, but was very certain that the current child in question was definitely not his. I mean, how does that make sense in any way? You went to visit your children and end up visiting your ex. Girlfriend. Yeah, and I had pretty much fallen victim that day. You, oh, you, you felt victim. How are you falling a victim when you're the one that initiates fell it? Fell victim. He's the one that initiates it. Mr. Sedeno had a long list of doubts that made him feel he couldn't be the father of her third child. He claimed the pregnancy happened way too fast, and he was sure the period they both had sex didn't add up to her getting pregnant. Like, there was a year between difference of between my, my son and my daughter, and then she had this third kid, which I wasn't even around her that much long of a time to even for me to be the father. And if I was, why wouldn't she put me on the... So you're saying the... that when you were with her, when you all were in a relationship, it took a year to conceive your first child. Yes. It was a blaming contest in the courtroom, and they were very good at playing it. Ms. Remarez claimed he never enjoyed spending time with her kids. She said every time he came to pick them up, he was always so eager to drop them off. Why? Because his current girlfriend didn't want him to spend any time with her. How I take the kids, but can you do this for me? No, like, that's it's not never why I'm like there. that. I let him take the kids. He'll say he's gonna take the kids for a few days. He calls me hours later talking about, I need to drop them off. I need to go do something. He doesn't like to keep them. So I'm more comfortable with him watching them at my house. The cat started to fly out of the box, and Ms. Ramirez started to come clean about why she had actually decided to get pregnant. She was very jealous of Mr. Sedino's new girlfriend, and the moment she found out she was pregnant, she decided to have his child, too. Basically, she wanted him to focus all his attention on her. Maybe Let's be honest, Ms. Ramirez. Okay, maybe my super conscious mind. I did it to get back at her, which is, I feel bad for it, just 
I love my daughter and I got pregnant for the wrong reasons, but that's why I did it. So is that why you so had an ovulation you calendar? you admit it to the court that you I have an ovulation, ovulation calendar. calendar. There's no reason an innocent child should be suffering because of the mistakes adults make. At this point, you sort of feel sorry for the little child in question. These two had made a fool of themselves, and they were trying to make their child suffer for their mistakes. Anyway, it's time to see what the DNA results say about all of this. Mr. Cedeno, you are her father. I told you, she is your baby. Now you can't deny her. She's your kid. You look surprised. A little bit. I'm not surprised. Now this wasn't her first time coming to the paternity court. She had been here before. Guess what? The initial reason that brought her here is the same damn reason that she's here again. Some people don't just learn. I hope you guys are ready. It's gonna be one traumatizing show. Miss Kavanaugh, you appeared in our courtroom previously and tested two men as potential fathers of your one month old son, Malcolm. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, neither turned out to be his biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, today, you believe Malcolm's biological father is a good friend of your mother's, the defendant, Mr. Spence. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Kavanaugh was no good girl, trust me. She had been quite mischievous. This time around, she didn't just get intimate with any random guy. She got intimate with her mom's friend. She has some serious balls, trust me. Yes, Your Honor. I, I know how bad it sounds. Um, it is bad. Um, I started calling him up, asking for like rides, you know, to the grocery store, you know, to get stuff from my house. And um, like subconsciously, I was trying to try to seduce him. I, I was wearing inappropriate things around him. The things Ms. Kavanaugh said would make a priest want to go to confession. They were beyond this world, believe me. Mr. Sense, on the other hand, didn't sound convincing when defending himself. I mean, do you just randomly sleep with your friend's daughter? Hell no. It was like she said, uh, came over a couple of times. She was in inappropriate gear. Uh, first time, I shunned it off. Second time, I said, hey, watch yourself. Third time, it's starting to look good. Fourth time, fourth time, lapse in judgment, and here we are today. Listening to everything that pops out of both their mouths was really uncomfortable, but let's proceed, shall we? I mean, there was one month old kid involved. These two really do need some counseling. I see a little bit, but from being in court previously, I found out that you can't always go on looks at all. So, when you found out you were pregnant, did Mr. Spence's name come to mind immediately? Um, no, Your Honor. It really was like, I thought Mr. Bo Mr. Bowles was the dad. Moving on, when Ms. Kavanaugh found out she was pregnant, Mr. Spence's name did not pop up in her head as the potential father. Damn. Apparently, she wasn't just fooling around with him. I would definitely give her an ass whooping if she were my child. After the court, I started thinking, well, he could be a possibility that Mr. Spence is the father. And I texted him and I asked him, when was the last time we had sex? He told me it was the end of October. So I'd. And when was Malcolm born? He was born July 9th. So when you do the math on that, that's. Yes, Your Honor. About the window of conception. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Kavanaugh's mom took the stand and, oh boy, did she have a lot to say about her daughter and her so-called friend. She said she noticed the eye contact they gave each other when they met. Deep down in her heart, she knew something was gonna go down. So I questioned each of them. They each denied that anything had happened. Um, I, then basically how I found out, one day Megan was angry with me and we had kind of a little tiff or whatever. It was kind of a big tiff, but when we did, she blurted out that you were right. And I did, I did sleep with Ken. The courtroom was filled with nothing short of shock. The most insane revelations started to surface, and these two had a lot of explaining to do. Another epic blockbuster takes the stage. Mr. Spencer happens to be married. I knew this guy had some secrets. He was willing to be the father, but he sure had doubts. My doubt is, first of all, it was only once. Um, the window of conception that she describes. I'm baby there. born in July. I'm there, yeah. I'm, so I'm, you you I'm within the year. window of conception. I, I'm in you don't year. dispute that. that. I do not dispute All right. That's why I'm here. Right. That is why I'm here. Do you have any knowledge as to whether or not she was sleeping with other people during yes. that time? Yes, she told me. Well, the suspense is finally over, and the hassle of who the dad of their child is is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Spence and Ms. Kavanaugh. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Mr. Spence, you are not his father. Oh, no. It's okay. <laughs> Ms. Kavanaugh, we back here again. Yes, Your Honor. I know this isn't where you wanted to be. It's okay. I never wanted to be 
this person, Your Honor? You know what, look, look. Yes, you've done some things you're not proud of. Ms. Cousin and her mother had one goal in that courtroom to prove to her ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend that he was the father of her child. Trust me, these guys weren't here to play. From the looks on both their faces, they were ready to fight until they had no more strength in them. The whole situation began like this. Miss Cousin, you and your mother say you had no choice but to drag the defendant, Mr. Bell, into court today because you're fed up with his lies. Yes, you He are. denies being the father of your seven-month-old son, Taquan, and has even gone to the extreme by blocking all contact with you. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Honor. Everyone in that courtroom was tense. Ms. Cousin's mom was a force not to be reckoned with. She had all the power in the world to fight anyone who wronged her and her daughter. She wasn't the one who was hurt, but she sure was doing all the talking in that courtroom. Ms. Cousin, you say you're fed up with his lies. I'm fed up with his lies because he a two-time liar. He told my daughter this that you he was single, baby, that he was not in a relationship. Why you can't I know he was in a her relationship talk, with her because I seen his picture on her phone when she started who is being about? with with him, I seen how her attitude changed. Who did I you know, sleep with? I knew you then her. that she was pregnant. Who did I you know, sleep with? You are I her. I met you. I met you at a relative house. Apparently, Mr. Bell lied to her daughter and told her he was not in any relationship, but deep down, he had been seeing someone else. Mr. Bell was definitely not going to keep quiet while they dragged his name through the mud. He claimed they only went out once, and there was no form of relationship in the mix. We went out once, but that was it. A whole weekend? No. I had to get back to her. You went out once? A whole weekend? Yes. And then not only that, y'all had can lunch she, together. Can't let her work. daughter talk. I she wasn't her there. Room. I go in her room. I found receipts with two combos on it. I asked her what the combos for. She, for him and her. Mr. Bell wasn't just sleeping with her. He was also using her to sort out some of his bills. Ms. Cousin was furious. She couldn't understand why a man would lie to her daughter and still manipulate her into paying his bills. The worst part was that he didn't deny it one bit. You can definitely understand where all her anger is coming from because I would feel the exact same way. When she should have been- Were you paying his phone bill? Yes. While she was paying his phone bill and paying him, buying him lunch, I was also doing other things for me and my husband have a roof over our head. We don't have no other income, but what my husband do is work. And at the end of the day, I want Cortez to step up and take the responsibility and be a man and help take care of his son. Mr. Bell wasn't changing his story. He stood firm with his side of the story and said everything they accused him of was a big fat lie. There was no relationship between them, and all he did was flirt with her and eat whatever food she offered him, nothing more. He even went as far as saying they had sex in the car and she never visited his house. Wow. No. Nope. Well, you said you already ate the food she was buying it. Yeah, she offered. So, Mr. Bell, you said this was a one-time thing when you had sex with... In a car. Oh, okay, so you had oh. sex in a car. Did you use protection? Yes. No lie. Yes. No lie. Miss Cousin and her mom, they're claiming that this was going on. This was an ongoing relationship. That's not true? No. When Ms. Cousin's daughter found out she was pregnant, she called Mr. Bell to tell him about it, and on the spot, he denied the pregnancy, saying it couldn't be his, and he wanted nothing to do with the baby. When I came home, I called him. I said, I'm pregnant. He said, oh, well, call me back. Let me know what you gonna do. And that was it, and he hung up the phone. Did you tell your manager at work? I told my manager, because that's the day that my back was hurting. She said, and you could go. she told me the baby wasn't mine. I don't want Why the baby you... by you anyway. Wait, He's he so just kid. said that you told him the baby wasn't his. He's a compulsive to lie. All he do nah, is you lie. Mama but, Mr. Lie. Bell... It was turning into an unending catastrophe in the courtroom. The judge had taken enough of their rants and arguments, and she decided it was time to bring the situation to a close by reading out the DNA results. Who do you think the father of the child would be? Mr. Baker or his so-called best friend? Mr. Bell, you are the father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You're silent now. I will take my, I'll take my child's port papers in the mail. You've been chirping off is. all day. All day. You, you could not let them get a sentence out mm -hmm. without downplaying everything they said. Mm -hmm. Everything. You got two innocent women standing here. 